welcome back to the crochet crowd so it's my friends over at yarnspirations.com. Today is the Bernat herringbone crochet blanket. Intermediate level, very fabulously textured and using Bernat blanket yarn today. So we're going to be going through the steps on how to do this. So when you're looking at this, it seems obvious to start from the bottom and then work your way up. That's not how this one is done today. So it also has a step-by-step -step tutorial in format that you can see here and we are going to also do it in video format just so that you understand it and there is a crochet diagram available. So let's talk about the uh, procedures on starting to make this. So when you're looking at this blanket you're gonna notice that these are a large band like this. This is added on afterwards so when we go to start this we're gonna start immediately with the herringbone and then finish on the other side and then these bands here will be then added to the blanket afterward and then if you would like to do your um, your fringe you can do that too. So I'm gonna leave the fringe off of this video today. We do have several tutorials available on your inspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd Learning Channel for how to do fringe and you can follow the instructions that are available in this pattern for the sizing that you wish. So we're gonna be concentrating on the diagram today and let's talk about changing the size just in case this is something that interests you today. When we go to look at this pattern there is a repeat going on in this thing. So the band that we have right here that doesn't really matter because it's just one uh, stitch in each. Here it does matter in order to keep the balance. So in order to keep the balance you need to chain in multiples of six plus eight. So you go six, 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 six and then when you're satisfied with the width of this just add eight more chains and you will have the balance for this. So you can see that the six Rip, uh, stitch repeat as indicated here. So you're gonna notice that there's several steps that, that go in. So you can see that this chain three jumps down in front and so that's gonna be what's happening on this particular one. So the nice thing about this particular blanket is that every other row is working on the back of it. So when you're jumping down in front you can physically see that. So it's not like something that's gonna happen behind the work that you hope that when you turn it it's going to be there. He, this when all you're doing the fun stuff is going to be on the front side. So when you really look at this particular element you're noticing that the double crochets are separated by chains. So it's almost like a framework in behind and the stuff that's coming down in front will fill out and make it look more solid than probably truly that it is. So um, it's still gonna be solid but my point being is that in behind it's not just all double crochets just to make it even heavier. So I think we're ready to go. Let's begin and we're just gonna do some swatch work today and I'll demonstrate how to do this and then we'll demonstrate how to do that band. So let's begin. I am using Bernat Blanket yarn in order to play and we are going to begin with the slip knot. So we need to chain a certain amount or you can do the multiples. It depends on what you would like to do today. So you can either chain in multiples of six, 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 six and when you're satisfied add eight or you can chain 110 and have the exact sample. So choose the way that you're going to chain and then I will be right back here just a moment. So I'm gonna do the multiples of six. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. Satisfied yes or no. If not do another six and then when I'm happy with it just add eight and or chain 100 or 110 if you'd like the sample itself. So whatever you decided to do we're now going to work your way across that same chain. So you're going to go second chain from the hook. So just turn it uh, turn it here and you are going to go second. Because this is Bernat Blanket I always say to turn around and get the back hump. If you do that it creates a really large space that's very invisible. So what I'm recommending in the Bernat Blanket here is second chain from the hook. Go in so that there's two strands on top of the hook. Pull through and then single crochet. So you will notice that it will create a really large hole into this project if you do it the, on the back loop. So you see it now but it will balance out. So then chain one skip the next chain out and single crochet the next. And you're gonna do that all the way across on your chain. So chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next one and etc. Please do this all the way across. This is row number one. So when you get all the way across you'll end up with the single crochet at the end. Let's turn and work and begin row number two. So the first side here is the right side so we're now going to look at the wrong side and we'll begin row number two in just a second. So in row number two we're going to begin and we're gonna single crochet and we're gonna uh, sorry chain one and then single crochet in the first one and we're gonna match exactly what we see. So we're gonna chain one, skip the next chain one space and single crochet in the next and you're gonna do that all the way across. So you're matching exactly. So chain one, skip the next one and single crochet in the next stitch. So when you're skipping you're skipping over a chain one space. So chain one, skip over the chain one 
and single crochet in the next and please do this all the way across. This is row number two. So I'm just coming up to the end, skip the last chain one space. I've already chained one and just single crochet in the last. And let's turn and work and begin row number three. So row number three, we're going to begin the fun stuff of doing the herringbone idea coming down and then back up. Let's begin row number three. As we begin row number three, you're going to notice that the last two rows here were single crochets. Those are only when we're getting this blanket started so we don't end up with major spacing at the end of a blanket. So now we're going to be changing up our idea. We're going to create the herringbone coming into this particular one and then when we come back going across, you're going to notice that it's going to be different in the way that we're gonna do that. So you gotta watch that. So let's begin row number three. You're gonna chain up one and you'll do one single crochet in the first single crochet. And then you're going to chain three. So one, two, three. So you're going to come down to where this one is right here. So see this chain one space? You're skipping that one and going to here. And you're going to go right into that space. Okay, do you see it? And, and slip stitch. So pull through and through and then chain three. So one, two, and three. So you'll skip the next space that you see here and just go right to the single. Okay, do you see that? So let's go again. So chain three, so one, two, three. So you're gonna skip this space which is immediately after and look at the second space and go second down. It's almost like that battleship game if you remember as a kid. Maybe I'm dating myself but Remember that? I sank your battleship. So you're just looking at like a grid format. So you're gonna slip stitch down there and then chain three. So one, two, three. So skip the next chain one space that's coming and go right into the single. So you're doing that all the way across. So chain three. So one, two, three. So you skip the first space that you see. Go to the second over and second down and slip stitch and then eventually you'll come to the other side. So you're gonna chain three, so one, two, three and the only option is you skip the next space that's coming and just go right into the next single crochet. So therefore you can kinda see it's going on here. So you're gonna turn your work and let's begin row number four which is on the wrong side and this is where the fun begins. So every single crochet on row number four gets something. Okay, so you gotta look at it from that perspective. So if you're on a single crochet up here, that's gonna get something. And then the single crochets that are in between coming down. So if you look at it, we went into the space and there's single crochets on both sides of that space. We're gonna be playing within those two. Because it's further down on this particular concept, those ones are going to get double crochets. So watch what we do. We're going to chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first one. So we're still gonna maintain a grid. So we single it in the first one, chain one. So now we're looking for the next single crochet which is here. You can feel that there's a space here, it's right here. And that's where you're going to double crochet. So leave that herringbone alone in behind. Chain one and then you're going to come into the next single crochet. So there's a chain one space that's in between. If you look at it, if you peel everything. So you're coming into the very next one and you're gonna double. And then you're gonna chain one and the next single crochet that is holding the herringbone is the one that you're gonna play with. So you're just gonna single crochet there. So do you see that you're reaching down when you're in the herringbone section but when you're coming up in between them you can see that you're just filling it in. So let's try again. So chain up one. So look for the two. Think about like bedpost pillars or something it, for your mind. So just double crochet in the, the first single crochet that you see. Chain one and then double crochet the next one. So there's a chain one space that's between those. And then chain one and then come back to the top. Do you see that? Okay, let's do the last one. So chain one double crochet down in, chain one, double crochet the next one and then eventually you'll come to the end. So chain one and single crochet in the top of the 
next single crochet that's available to you. So you can see you just filled in the behind there when you did that. So that was row number four. So now we're gonna begin rows number five and six which is the repeat for the duration of this blanket. So let's begin row number five. You're gonna chain up one and you're gonna do single crochet in the first one. So it's exactly what you already know when you came down and did this. So the difference is, is that you look over and see the pillars. You're coming in between. That's the middle, right? So if you look at that and follow that straight down, that is where you're gonna go, is right here. So you chain three to get there. So one, two, three and separate the pillars and then come down to this one and slip stitch and then chain three. So one, two, three and then single crochet into the next single crochet that you see. Okay, so chain three. So one, two, three. See the two pillars go straight on down and slip stitch and then chain three. So one, two, three and then come back up in between. You can see those. So chain three. So one, two, three. See the pillars coming straight down and go through and chain three. So one, two, three and then just finally do single crochet in the end. So you can see that it just filled in the grid marks that you saw. So here's what it looks like in the back and let's begin row number six which is the last part of the repeat. So five and six are the repeat. So number six here we go. We're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet in the first one and it's just like number four. So chain up one and then look for the two pillars. Those pillars are now gonna match each other. You'll see them a lot easier now because they were double crochets. So continue to make those double crochet. Chain one and do the other pillar of a double crochet and then chain one and then come in. So make sure this one here, this is part of the idea, make sure you go here. So it feels like you need to go here but just peel that back and just single crochet in there and that will hold that into position. Okay, so let's try again. So chain up one and go for the two pillars that you see. So double crochet chain one and then do the other double crochet chain one and then see how it's going in front. So just look for it and single crochet. You don't need to check it like that. I'm just doing that for demonstration purposes. So you're just gonna work your way all the way across in the same motion and then that's it. So we're gonna be talking about the repeat in just a moment. So when you get to the very end, don't forget to single crochet that last one and this was the end of row number six. So eventually we have to be conscious on how we're gonna finish this thing because you will see that there's gapping. So I'm sure there's gonna be something there and let's uh, go through the information on being able to do the repeat. So let's go through the repeat of this. You're going to do now rows number five and six over and over and over now until the project measures 52 inches and you wanna end on the wrong side just like you see. So we want to end on the wrong side and we're going to fasten off at this point. So you just wanna fasten off once you get there so you won't be there yet if you're just following this for the first time and you wanna weave in your ends. So you, when you weave in your ends what I would recommend you do just weave it in to the actual stitch work itself and when you're crocheting right up over top of this stuff then you can just trap it right underneath and it, it will catch. And the secret to Bernat blanket like this is that if you're weaving in one direction I would also weave it back in the other in the opposite direction. So I've been working this way. So I would turn this around and just kind of weave it through and bring it back in the opposite direction as well. I've learned that over the years with the thicker yarns that it's better to go in two, dire two different directions when you're we weaving in. So when you go right up over top of these um, stitches it'll get stuck right underneath. So I'm gonna leave that until I'm done. So I'm on the wrong side so I want to turn it to the right side and we're going to begin the top edging of this particular idea. So we're going to grab the yarn again and we're just gonna go into the top corner and you're just gonna fasten on. So you can do a standing single crochet if you wish. So if you go through 
So if it's already in the hook and you go through and pull through, if you pull through two that's a standing single crochet. So you're gonna go into each one of the stitches and chain one spaces across this blanket. So the next one is a chain one space. So go right up over top of your stragglers and catch those underneath. So the next one's a double crochet. So go in the double crochet and then the next one's a chain one space. So pr pretty much every other stitch is a chain one space. So you're gonna wanna do that all the way across on your project and this is the top edging and we will be back in just a moment. So just single crochet in each of the stitches and chain one spaces across. So I worked my single crochet all the way across this so I'm just gonna turn my work and we just continually just now just chain up one and now that you've established it it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches. And then when you get to the other side just turn again chain one and single crochet back. So you wanna do this enough times so this will measure a total of uh, four inches. So when you're measuring it from the front side here this should be four inches tall. Once you get to four inches then you can fasten off and then what we can do then is then begin to do um, the back, the bottom side of this to be able to finish off the other side. So I'm just gonna single crochet my way across and what I want to show you is how to fasten off with a tapestry needle and that will be in just a moment. So let's just pretend we have our four inches done. So when you get to the end you want to just cut this yarn long enough so that you can make it into a yarn tail so that you can use it to sew. So you're just gonna pull through. Now I found with myself is that if you weave in the final edge of anything it'll always pop out just as the law of crochet. So if you pop it through a tapestry needle and then you just pop it through the bottom underneath the stitches so don't you dare touch those outside so it doesn't show and you're gonna pull through and when you pull through you wanna pull it taut but not enough to change the shape and you're gonna go a slightly different path back it's all just staying with inside the stitching and then one more time and back in the opposite direction. So if you do this back and forth a total of three times it should never fall out on you and that's how you would fasten off. So let's begin and we're gonna turn to the bottom edging. So we're gonna turn this upside down and start on the right side and begin to do the opposite side so that we have the band on both sides. To do the bottom edging you're just gonna restart your yarn and because I had you doing the nice stitch work you're just gonna follow the stitches across. So just do a standing single cause it looks nicer. So when you pull through there should be two loops and pull through two. So we do have videos on standing single crochets. So like before there is chain one spaces so you're just gonna feed those with a, uh, with a single crochet as well and the next one has to be a stitch if that was just a chain one space. So you're just gonna feed these in all the way across just like you did before and I'll see you at the end of the row. So just one single crochet in each of the stitches or chain one space across. When you get to the other side just simply turn your work and chain one and you'll do one single crochet in each. Like before you wanna make this band a total of four inches tall. So you're just gonna go back and forth and make sure they both look the same and get your four inches. I've already shown you how to fasten off so at this point I'm gonna leave this for you and then we're gonna move on to do the final border which is the trim and then you can do the fringe if you'd like to as well. So let's cover on how to do the final trim. So obviously you'll have a lot more herringbone, you'll have a lot more band but this is pretty simple. When we go to start with this one we're going to start with the right side facing up so you should see the herringbone. The other side doesn't have it and you just start off in the corner and you're just going to go one time around and just do a standing single to start and you're gonna do one single in each. Now when you get to a corner you need to and we'll finish this corner when we get back around but you need to put in three single crochets so that you can do the bend that will happen. So let me get to the other corner and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment and show you how to go down the side. So when you get close to the corner the last stitch is the corner so make sure you put in three single crochets and that will allow it to bend and then turn the corner. So let's add one more. Now when you're going down the side you just have to equally space those out. So just starting and just equally. So if it's starting to push, push in like this it means that you're going too quick and if it's starting to ruffle out like a dress assuming that your dress is ruffling um, then you are adding too many stitches too close together. So it's a fine balance 
and make sure that you go right into some chain work. Don't go into a space because if you go into a space it'll hold that space open. So go right into the chains uh, work itself and just equally space all the way down. So when you lay this down, I would do probably about a foot or so and lay it down and see if it's gonna lie flat on you and maybe you'll have a perspective on how to do the remaining of the side. So when you get to the very last stitch which is the first one here, you wanna chain three. So one, two and three. So I've been crocheting a long time that I can get that to go pretty much the first time. So then you're just gonna go all the way around with that single crochet and then turn your corner and then come all the way back and I'll see you at the end of this round in just a moment. So make sure you do put it in your threes and then we'll finish off with putting in three within the beginning one that we just uh, started with as well. When you get all the way back around, remember that you've already started with one in the first one. So you just wanna put two more into the side of that first one and then just join it to the top of the first single crochet to finish. Okay, so then you're done. I've already shown you how to weave off. So what I am going to do is just quickly review the fringe and I'll show you how that's done pretty quickly and we'll begin to do that in just a moment. So let's quickly review on how to do the fringe. You're going to take your yarn and you're going to measure a total of 14 inches. So you will wanna grab a tape measure for that and just kind of eye it out to 14 inches. Okay, so what I would do is cut a whack of them at the same time. A whack in my, in my uh, language just means a lot. So what I would do is just cut one that you think is 14 inches or pretty close to it and then just keep labeling, putting these down like that. Okay, so each one of the fringe is made up of just one of these strands. And what you're going to do at the end of this is that you'll just lay the blanket down and then if there's any discrepancies in the height you will just equally trim that across. So once that's done you're then going to take this and you'll look at the right side of the project. You'll fold just one strand equally in half. So now what you're going to do is take this and start on an edge and work your way across. So when you go to stick it in, stick your hook from the back side coming to the front. It matters. So you're just gonna put the loop on and pull through. This loop here when it crosses over top of this will appear nicely equal on the front side of the work if you access it from the back side. So just spreading it open and pulling the two strands through and see this crossbar? It will be on the front side of the work. So if you went for, uh, the opposite way of going down and then pulling it through, this would be on the back of the project. So doing the next one, just, just fold it equally in half and go from the back in the next stitch, pulling it through and then just split, splitting it and pull it through. And you're just gonna equally do that all the way across. So at the end of your project, all you can just do is once you have it all done, if there's any discrepancies, you're just gonna eye it out and then just equally just, you know, safely cut it so that it's all the same distance. So I would lay it out and have it nice and flat like that so therefore you'll have equal fringe if this is something that you're looking for. So it's a really neat idea. This is the Bernat Herringbone Crochet Blanket by Yarnspirations.com. Please enjoy. I'd love to see your creativity so make sure you share it with us here on uh, you, our, on Facebook and uh, you can find that more information on our Facebook for other free patterns as well as here on YouTube. Have a great day and we hope to see you again and here come the hands. Bye bye.